today we're not only 3D printing, but we're running a CNC machine. That's right, today we've got a brand new toy to play with on the channel, and before you comment, I know a 3D printer is technically a CNC machine. You know what I'm trying to say. Now to tell you the truth, I've actually been playing with this CNC machine for a couple of months, and honestly the learning curve's been a little bit steeper than I was expecting. It's taken me a little bit longer to figure it out. But today I want to use it in a 3D printing project. We're going to be using the Makera Carvera Air today, and it was sent to me free of charge from Makera. They simply ask that I do some projects with it, include it in some videos, and tell you fine people what I think about it. So today we're going to look into something that I've actually been wanting to do for quite some time. We're going to fix the most annoying part of my iPhone. Just, just hang around, I'll explain. Phones are getting better and better. When I started this channel, the only thing I used to shoot my videos for like the first year was my phone. And it's truly never been easier to start creating content because the phone camera tech has come so far. Now I'm super thankful for that fact, but the thing I've always hated about these great cameras is this ridiculous camera bump. The thing sticks out so far. That's the trade-off, I guess, but I don't like the way it makes my phone wobble when I set it down on the table. So today I want to make a phone case. Now I know what you're thinking. Keo, just print a phone case and be done with it. We don't have to make a whole project out of this. Nope. We have a CNC machine and I plan to use it, dang it. So my plan here is to make a phone case out of TPU, but I want to have a wood insert in the back of it. I love the idea of mixing that organic wood grain design with something smooth and uniform like plastic, or just mixing materials in general. So that's what we're going to do. If you don't want to see me struggle to operate a CNC machine, now's probably the time to move on to the next video. But if you would like to feel better about your own intelligence level, stay tuned. So before we jump into the CNC proper portion of the video, let's take a look at printing this phone case. I had a look around at different existing files because I didn't want to start from zero on this. I had already taken a lot of time learning how to use this machine and the software and all that stuff, and Makero were very kind to let me actually get a grasp on this before releasing the video. So it was in everybody's best interest to save time where possible. So I found this great candidate on Maker World by this dude, Grant. His case was simple, but it provided the protection that I wanted by the looks of it. And after downloading it, I needed to decide how exactly I wanted to make the wood insert. Before I did that, I decided it might be a good idea to print the case as it was. For the sake of time, once again, I used PLA. This would get me something in hand super quick before I began modifying the design. I wanted to hold it to get a little bit of perspective. But of course, I couldn't get my phone inside of the case after I printed it because PLA. However, after some modifications, I could still use this print for some mock-ups, and this was plenty good enough to give me an idea of what direction I needed to continue towards. So with some much-needed perspective in place, I moved on to modifying the file. Now, before we jump into the modeling work for our case, I want to briefly touch on this Carvera Air. It's an absolute beast of a desktop CNC machine, and it comes with everything that you need to get started. Adding to that the seemingly infinite number of tutorial videos and pages of documentation, I feel like I'm going to be able to get a grasp on figuring this sucker out. Now, this machine is fairly basic in terms of CNC stuff, but still, it's incredibly capable. There's a laser module, a rotary axis, I'm probably going to get into those in a different video, I'm sure. But today, we're going to keep it simple and do some engraving into our wood insert. The Carvera comes with a bunch of bits that spin around to accomplish whatever operations you set up. In our case, we're basically going to focus on a contour path only. This is going to achieve the engraving operations that we're looking to get done, but the thing we need to break down a bit here is the workflow for this machine. Let's put it into terms of 3D printing. For starters, you need a file or something to translate into G-code, and you need software to help you do that. makera has got this program called Makera Cam. This is kind of like your slicer, sort of. This is where we'll be setting up our project. For me, I started with this picture of the best dog in the world, Nacho. After selecting it and creating a path, we can move on to more of the setup operations. The CAM software has all the material and tooling presets loaded up already, so that in and of itself is going to flatten the very steep learning curve I'm already up against. Now with the material selected and the dimensions thrown into the CAM, we can move on to creating a new toolpath. 
These operations are all on this tree on the left hand side, so as we build up our processes here, this is where they're going to show up. Once we've selected our 2D path operation, we can specify tool information as well as a bunch of other parameters. I'm not going to get too deep into all of these things because I want to focus on the project. Just know you can tweak it to infinity. But this is how we refine the G-code and get the machine set up to work on our workpiece. But back to the phone case file. Today we're using Tinkercad because it makes it ridiculously easy to do what we're trying to do. I basically just threw a bunch of cubes inside of the area that I wanted to cut out. I used the radius feature and stretched the block until I had my desired shape. And then I used a negative shape to get that inside corner radius. I know it looks clunky, but as long as you trust the process, usually we find our way through it. So this is the cavity that our wood insert's going to sit inside of. I still need to figure out how to cut this shape out of wood using that CNC, but that's a problem for future me. For now, we can continue working this model. Now unfortunately, this is the point that I decided to completely bail on the primary goal of this video. I began seeing this project come together in a way that I wasn't expecting. And I was getting excited about a simple wood insert, but I no longer wanted to have an insert so thick that it made my phone sit flush. Now I simply just wanted to make a cool looking phone case. But I think it's important to mention this in the video. It's alright if you're doing a project and the plan changes. It's okay to mess up and change things, even if it's not perfect by somebody else's standards, it's still great. It's your project. You can do whatever you want. This video is another example of my plan changing and I want you to be able to see that it's totally cool if that happens. But let's continue learning about CNC stuff before we jump back into the 3D printing stuff. Once we've gone through and set up our project and we have our workpiece secured, the other half happens inside of the Carvera controller application. You can think of this kind of as the device tab of your slicer. This is where you load and start jobs, but it's also where you can do things like control the machine in general. The controller app is the one we're going to use to execute our G-code, and we can do this by uploading it to the machine before starting it from the controller. From there, we can choose a leveling operation before this thing starts whizzing away. I threw in the included leveling probe to do the leveling portion. Once the machine's done that, it prompts for a tool change. And this is where the sharp pointy bits get thrown in and things begin happening. Now it's worth mentioning right now. This machine can be super dangerous. It's very easy to set up a workpiece wrong or input the wrong information in the CAM software, causing a collision. In fact, it's a wonder that I didn't do that at any point while I was learning how to use it. But on top of all of that, these bits are like super sharp. Make sure you're handling them with care and absolutely do not mess around inside of the machine while you have a bit loaded in there. Don't go vacuuming underneath it, you're just gonna stab yourself. Now with that disclaimer out of the way, let's begin. Back into the Tinkercad now, the only thing that I really needed to do to finish this model was figure out what feature I could add to hold the wooden insert in place. At first my thought was maybe some tabs or something, but that would probably add a lot of unnecessary complexity, so maybe we don't go that route. My next thought was just like a tight interference fit, but that would never work with TPU, and I was absolutely set on using TPU for sure, I think. But then it came to me. I would just go with a simple taper. So I jumped back into my project and did this the simplest way that I knew how. I took the shape of the insert and made it a 32nd of an inch bigger in both directions to add that much more to the perimeter of the hole that we made in the case. And then I moved it up a little bit off of the work plane and cut it from the case. This put a nice step around most of the cavity that we cut out, but importantly I could do a nice chamfer around the wooden piece to taper it a little bit. That would allow it, hopefully, to sit inside of this pocket nicely without any drama. So that's what I did. I was pleased with the case and I decided it was time to once again print it out to test fit it. Now back over at the Carvera Air, my first cut was actually going pretty well. There were loads of false starts to get us to this point, but now we're actually carving some wood. Finally. I let this project work overnight because it was like a five hour job, but this was very important because it allowed me to familiarize myself with the workflow. This was the point that I finally broke the back of using this machine, and honestly it took a bit longer than I was expecting to get here. But now I could work towards my next goal, which was actually making a suitable phone insert. The first carving of my beloved nacho looks great, but once again, this was the point where I decided to pivot. I decided it may be better to reel back a little bit and use the much simpler Keo logo instead of a very complex nacho picture. Right now I'm learning and this picture here takes a while to process. With the logo, it's just straight lines. And I'm certain I won't get it right immediately, so it'll allow me to try and fail faster. And if you aren't failing, you're not improving. You like that? 
But this was also the point that I decided I might move to a different material for the inserts. As I've been looking through the stock material that comes with the machine, the PCBs here kind of had me intrigued from the beginning. And there's four of them, which means I can screw up uh, up to three times without any consequence. So I'm going to use this material and make a sick Keo logo PCB insert. Feel the whiplash, my friends. Now there's another super important reason that I felt like it might be a good idea to pivot to a different design. The nacho picture, like I mentioned, is pretty complicated. As such, the cam software absolutely bogs down, like worse than any cubic slicer next when I was trying to navigate it. There's just too much processing effort happening to maintain that complicated toolpath, so this will be a much lighter weight option in that regard as well. Believe me, this lag was like super infuriating. I almost gave up on everything just because it took so long for my clicks to register. Let's check on the phone case half of this project now. Back to the printers that we all know and love, I decided to print a cord out phone case because I suspect that the stock material is just too small for my cavity. And after printing that for no reason, I figured out that I could bring the 3D model into the cam software and overlay it directly on top of the material. This showed me plainly that it was in fact not going to cover the cavity. So I went back to the drawing board and made the cavity a little bit smaller. After running through all that, I decided I would try printing this out and TPU using the Snapmaker U1. This machine's impressed me so far. And the thing I dislike the most about TPU is also the thing I dislike about single color printers in general. The fact that you have to manually load and unload. I just want a robot to do it for me, okay? Call me spoiled, but that's what it is. Well, this machine takes care of that kinda, and judging by the quality of this print, we are on to a winner. I removed the support material from this iteration and cleaned it up a little bit. And if this fit my phone good enough, we could move on. This is a big moment, make no mistake. So luckily, it did fit. It's a little bit floppy because of the hole in the back, but otherwise, it fits super well. Really, this is a great model, so kudos to Grant. But the real test was ahead of us still. Would my PCB insert fit inside of this phone case, or would I have to spend another couple of hours reiterating to make it all fit? Well, as soon as I had the case and the insert in the same vicinity, I knew right away that I had made a mistake. Of course, I cut the thing backwards. The logo was on the wrong side of the piece. <laughs> Dang it. But this allowed me an opportunity to iterate again, use the data I've learned from this failure to make the next one a lot better. So it was time to move on to my final plan. This is what the whole video has led up to, this point right here. If you've made it this far and you like what you're seeing, consider subscribing to our $2 a month Patreon. This is the vehicle that we're using to do this content thing full time, so if you want to hop on board and join us in our quest to do that, check the link in the description. But back to the final plan, here's what I've learned, here's what I plan to do with that information. First of all, the TPU is too floppy, so I'm thinking PETG might have to be the way that we go. I've got this olive green that I typically don't gravitate towards, but against this copper, I feel like it might just work. Also, I'm gonna need to make the back a little bit bigger, like thicker, to allow the insert to fit inside more securely, I think. And we need to add some strength back into the case since we took so much material out of it. Finally, I'm gonna run the CNC job again, but this time I plan to cut on the correct side of the piece. And the interesting thing here is I'm filming to get you right up to the point. I haven't actually done any of this yet. This is what I plan to do after I turn the camera off. I don't know how this project's gonna end at this point. I do know I need to get this done and I want it to be done right and I don't just wanna throw it together for you. So here's how we're saving some time, but hopefully I can pull this thing together because <laughs> we're coming up against it. Wish me luck. Hi there, it's a new day. You can tell because I have a purple shirt on and also I'm standing now. So here's what we landed on. I ended up making the phone case thicker to accommodate the insert. That went pretty well and actually pushed us back towards the initial goal of fixing the camera bump wobble. So that was kind of lucky. I also made the insert a little bit bigger on the outside and I adjusted the relief lip in the case to accommodate that difference in size. And overall, this is what we've got. So I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with how well the Carvera Air works and how easy it was to hop into the workflow once I'd done a couple of projects and cut my teeth, so to speak. So aside from the operator being incompetent, this machine is super fantastic. Like it's a great piece of kit, especially if you want to just start in CNC stuff from zero like I have. 
I would totally recommend this one. Thanks again to Makehara for sending it over. It's been super cool learning something new. If you're looking to get into CNC stuff, check the link below. That's an affiliate link, so I get a commission. Keep that in mind as you make your purchasing decision. But really, there are incredible documentation and tutorial videos for every single piece of the process is enough to tell you how much they believe in their machines and how great they really are. Imagine that, a company that supports their customer even after they've purchased the machine and spent money with them. Hmm. Anyway, if you want to support our goal to do this thing full time, check out our Patreon. The link is below. It's only two bucks a month. Otherwise, get yourself a shirt at keoprints.com. And thanks for watching me struggle this far. Bye.